you're welcome guys so in this video what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be recreating project power because project power was created on um on when bubble didn't have the responsive design so you're going to be seeing all of this width and height and things like that um so i'm going to be basically recreating it on the um, new responsive design for bubble and if you're new to bubble it's going to give you an idea of how bubble works right so here i have my application and the first thing that i want to start off is with the database uh, functionality so i'm going to go into my database and configure it so i've already put you know first name i'm going to put the last name so i'm going to be using project power as the more or less like the design you know flow and I'm going to be recreating everything I have here into this new application called Project Land. Okay. So I have profile image and project. This is an image. And I'm just going to create a new type and call it project and just create another one and call it task um i mean ideally i could have under my task i could have to do listed under my task but rather than do that i would um yeah i would just have it you know as tasks so you can create tasks and those tasks will serve as to do you know for the project so here we had it you know listed as a list of projects this is not really the best way to build you know so rather than put my projects on that list of projects what i would do is i would come here and i would add a user type a relational user type called user and so that means that each user would you know um, be basically assigned to each project and you know this should um you could have it both ways i mean now that i think about it because in this instance you're having it that you know it's assigned to a list of projects but you could also have users that are assigned to projects so instead of us saying it is um so let's think about this now. So a user could have lots of projects that you know is assigned to him, right? And um, and then a project could also have users within it. So I think the best way to do this would be to have this as a um, Okay, so um, I think instead of us, you know, um, having it as um, users, let's call them assignees, right, which is the right word to use, which are a list of users that have been assigned to this particular project. And the project can have a name, so we can call this name. And this is a text field. And then, of course, you have a creator. You could also have it such that maybe you know a project could have a project at you know um, manager, which is just one user. I mean, this could be something that could be assigned to just one user. So you have somebody that created the project, which most times would be the project manager. And then you have, you know. Um, Hold on, please. All right, we are back. So you have a project manager that could be assigned to the project, and then you have name, you know, name of the project, and then assignees. And then another thing, you know, I'm thinking that we could have something called docs, which you know could just have like a link and a name. Let's make this like a text element. And then let's make this a name. All right, the name of the document, text. So the name of the document and then link to that document, right? So it could be linked from your Google 
you know, um, file and things like that. Um, come, I think I need to switch my internet to something better because this is just not working as well. Yeah, I think this is better. And then you could also have the option to upload the file, which is going to be a file. So I can call this doc file, for example, you know, and things like that. So um, I think that works fine and looks really, really well. So you have the document, you have the doc file link name, and then, you know, each document is attached to a project. So we're just going to make this relational to a project. And then for tasks as well. So when you look at task, let's look at this. You know, a task has assignees, you know, so I think the assignees should work better on the task level rather than on the project level, which is what I was trying to figure out. Maybe the project manager, you could have a project manager for a project, which is good. Right, and the name of a project, which is great. But then for task, you could, you know, just have them as assignees. So people that are assigned to a task. And this is a list of fields. Of course, you have the name of the task. It's a text element. Now I'm going to use an option set for status. Skip tutorial, task status. And then different statuses are, um, I'm going to use an option set. I'm going to call this do. So we had in do, in progress, and completed. Progress. I don't know if that works. I mean, I'm trying to remember what I used here. Let me just collapse this, collapse this. Can really get annoying trying to find you know groups. So I used new in progress completed. So I think that that makes more sense. So let's say new in progress completed. So that makes a lot of sense for status task status. So I'm just going to call this status. And this is going to be an option option set called st task status, and it can be, you know, you could put it at default at new. So anytime a task is created, the default is new, but then it, it changes obviously depending on where the status is at at any point in time. Let's go back to the our wireframe. So here you have category, which to be honest with you, would I want this app to have a category? If it does, then that would be an option set, you know, which we didn't use here. So I'm just going to skip category for now. Then I'm going to go into due date, which is a due date is a date. Beautiful. And then here you have notes. And then you have progress, which is a number. So notes is a note, it's a text. And what we can do here is that we can make notes its own, you know, uh, different elements. And we can give this a body. Which is a text, 
and then we can, of course, it has to be assigned to a task, the parent task, which is here. So it has a body and then it's assigned to a task. Then you have progress. So let's go back to our task. We have progress, which is a number. You have status and title, which you already have name and status. So I think the only thing here that we want to do is, okay, we need to add a description and a category. So I think in terms of database, we are done. I didn't add a category because um, for now, I wouldn't want to work with categories. I just want to basically, you know, build this out the way it should be. So as you can see here, we have some analytics board and we have some other things like that, group com, things like that. So let's start off with a couple of basic things, right? Just hide this. Welcome. There we go. Hide this as well. Group ZZ. And now. And it can really be hard getting some of these things where, you know, based on where they are. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So what do we have here in terms of the wireframe? We have this left hand side floating group which we could make it a group, we could make it, you know, yeah, a different element. We have um, the page itself. You have then this header with, um, you have this HTML for scrolling entities. And then you have the group header on top. And then you have this for settings. And then you have this for the current user profile. Okay, so let's get into it. So let's start with creating this particular page. So first I'm going to grab a floating group. And I think this will be a beautiful time for us to set our colors first. I'm just going to go into my styles, style variables. I can say that the primary color for this app would be this. Um, I, mean, I wanted to go with the black before, <laughs> but I think I'm going to go with, I think I'll just go with the same. Yep. And I think that's okay. So we can go into this now and then we can say that we get a floating group and paste that floating group here. And the layout for this should not be fixed, it should be column. We can make the width to be 
one two eighty. Seven hundred is fine. So this floating group is a column. I'm going to make it a 230. And then I'm just going to extend this both ways so that it flows from top to bottom. So I'm just going to call this, you know, menu buttons. So floating group menu buttons. And the background color would be our main background color. And honestly, I'm, I'm beginning to change my mind, so I'm just going to make this black. Okay. Next, let's grab a group. Draw this group inside here. Now, because this is a floating group, this group will appear above it. So what I'm going to do to this group is, I'm just going to call this group, group um, task list. Or maybe task menu. I'll give this a left hand margin of 230 so that it begins from here and give this a top margin of 20 so that it sits there. I'm going to remove the minimum width, move the minimum height, maybe reduce my zoom to 80% 80, 80 so I can see my entire page. Go back into here. And I'll just make the minimum height to be 600 pixels. So that just flows all the way down. And to get that nice curve here, you know, at the top left, I would define each border. And for the radius on the top left, I'll make it a 20. So that we have that nice border flow. And I'll just make the background to be flat color and white, 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 white. F, 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 F. Next, I'll just make this dark. And that will give me that, um, you know, that flow that we have there. You can click on this, but it doesn't really flow the way we want it to, do, to, to flow. So that is just basically creating that nice flow that we see here with this curve and the design. So next, I'm just going to put my logo and an icon there. And to do this, I'm going to download a couple of plugins. First of all, I like this Ionic. Um, icons. So I'll just quickly download that and then I'll download the material icons. Google material icons. Okay. Here you can define the padding 20, 20, 20, 20. I remove the left and right patterns because I don't. I'm not sure if I need them for now. So let's get one of our icons. Um, I'm not sure if you can see what we have here. So we're going to call this icon 
bah, 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 bah. what do we call this icon now? So we're looking for something, you know, starry. Maybe not star. Let's check light, electricity. Okay, let's go with the ball. And I would like for my main color <laughs> to be something. Let's just create a new variable for this main color. Gold. And I want this to be sort of like my um, go to color for the app. So yeah, instead of doing using this, let's let's look for something a bit with much more sparkle. Maybe this. Yeah, I think this is nice. And then let's make this a 35 by 35. Maybe a 50 by 50 pixel. Center line. Get a text element. Draw it in here. Let's make it white. I don't have time to define all the um, yeah to define all the styles, so that's why I'm just doing them as we see fit here. But for this, uh, I'm going to try and go with color because I think it's nice. It's a nice font. Now make this um, twenty-four. Make it bold. Instead of making it bold, make it 700. Call this project land. Set our line. I'll crop these two together and put them in a column container with a bit of five pixels body padding beside, you know, separate them. And I'll call this my group logo. Just make sure that move this minimum height and make sure that it's nice and snug there. All right, so next thing I want to do is first just take one of this, paste it underneath. I can take my unique elements again. If I, can, if I can find it, okay, I come. I'm just looking for something that represents, you know, maybe like a briefcase or a project or something. So I like this one. So I'll go with, of course, white. And maybe bring this down to uh, 18. And let's crop this together. But this time I'm going to group them in a row column and give it a spacing 20 pixels or 10, sorry, for the row. I'm just going to remove my face. Then I can center align these elements, put them at the center, put this at the center. And I just give myself a pattern of 20 from left. 
feels a bit much. What about 10? Stick to those. Let's leave it at 20. And then the minimum height of 50 pixels is fine. Yeah, so that just looks nice and snug there. Let's see how that looks compared to the one on top. Okay, so there's a bit of like a button there before we go into. So I'm just going to grab a button. Let's call this new project. Forty pixels is fine. Fit with the content is also good. Center line. Make this white. Take it to the previous. It's good. It's looking really good. So I'll give myself a row gap spacing of twenty pixels across all, you know, all of this. So I can call this group project. And then just copy and paste, call this group ta, um, doc. And this could be documents. So no, this wouldn't work because we want the documents to be basically attached to each project. You know, so we could configure it in different ways. I think documents is fine as it is like this here. So let's leave it as that. Um, we also want to have in this repeating group, what else? So we have analytics and team members. So this would be like a graph. This would be like team or users. So we're practically done with the left hand side of um, you know the wireframe as it should look for now. Another thing we want to do is of course this is first of all not just one project, it's a list of projects, right? So we want to you know convert this to a I want to convert it into a repeating group. So I'm going to first of all group this in a group, then convert it into a repeating group. So let's let's see how that works.
So replace this element type. I'm going to replace it with a repeating group. So I'm basically converting that into a repeating group. And I'm just going to say the minimum height of this repeating group is 50 pixels. It's a list of projects. So I want you to do a search for all the projects on the app. We'll give us a constraint where the created by is equals to current user, you know, and that's it. So I'm also seeing a flaw here because we want a situation that if I assign a project to somebody, if that person logs in, they should be able to see this you know, the projects that they've been assigned to, right? And they should be able to basically click into um, that project in order for them to use the project. So that's you know a flaw that we need to correct from the data from the database itself. So, you know, what I'm thinking is that we go back into our data type and then on that project, we should have assignees as well, right? Which is a user type. You know, we could do something advanced, but it's just not worth it. So, sorry, this should be assignees. And this is a user, it's a list of users, right? So so when we're doing this first search of projects, we could say that everyone that is assigned to this project, so that's the assignment contains this current user, then they will see the project, right? You will see the project. So if they are not assigned to the current user, if the project is not assigned to that person, that person would not see that project, you know, at that moment. All right, so let's get into it. We are making a bit of progress. Uh, I'm just going to remove all of this styling. Now reduce the minimum height to 50 pixels. Okay. So I'm going to go back into my styles and I would like you know, aside from this main color, I want another variable called secondary gold. So this would just be like a state of um, selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. I'll paste it here. But then I'll just reduce it to something faint like this. Yeah. Okay. Now, when somebody clicks into any of these projects, right, I want something to happen. I want to display data into the URL, into the parameter. And I want that data to reflect the name of the project. So I'm just going to take a text element from here, maybe this big one here, copy it here, make this, um, you know, black, as it should be. Let me just do a bit of padding, you know, on this as well. So I can say this is 20, 20, 20, 20 all around. And I can say that this text element is to the left, 
to the left, move it with two element. So this text element is going to be getting data from the page URL. And the data we're going to be getting is going to be a project. So I can say get project from page URL, which is a project. You know, and I want you to display its name. Same thing we're going to do here is that when this is clicked, when this group is clicked, I want you to display, I want you to go to the page. So navigation, go to the page. So I want you to go to the app page, but don't go empty added. Send a key. And the key is this current sales project, its name. Right. So it's going to be getting that project name from the URL. While at the same time, it's going to be displaying the project name to the URL. So I'm going to, also going to copy this and say that when get project project name, get project from the URL is this current sales project, and then this background color. would change to my secondary gold. So let's see how that would look. So it would change to this, which might be too bright. I don't think I like it. I think I'll go with the main color itself. Let's go with the main color. Yeah, I think this is better. Okay, so we are making a bit of progress. Now we can say that for this group task, that this element is hidden and is only displayed when you know get project is clicked or when you know any of those information is empty. But we'll get into that. You know, not to worry. We'll get into that. You know. In later videos in terms of the display of some of these functionalities so let's go ahead with this okay so we haven't actually done this header <laughs> and i think this header comes first before we go into some of these um, groups you know so before we get into this let's remove all of this again I can just copy this. Let's remove all this um, padding. And let's get a group. So we just paste the group in there. And as you can see, this group, it has um, yeah, I mean, the group has a height of 80 pixels. So I'm just going to maintain that same height. I remove the minimum width, give it a height of 80 pixels. I'll make this group, group a row. And so what you have here is you have this information. So I would um, fit with to element and just set to align this. Yeah. I also give this group some 20 pixels from the left, 20 pixels from the right. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for or I can just grab one from here, this, and paste it here. I can make this dark, call this settings. So yeah. Let's remove the fit width, you know, there. 
So now what we need is a is an image. Just copy and paste that image there. Make this last, and I can just make this 50. Keep element aspect ratio to ratio one to one, center and line, and then I can give it a roundness of. It has to be more than 20 than you know the half of the size for it to work. So this will be the current user's profile image. Scale is fine. Let's just give this a gap spacing of 20. What I like to do with groups like this is, excuse me. I mean, I just like to. I always, always, always love to put, you know, just a bit of border on the bottom although in this in this scenario I don't think that would be oh, that would be uh, necessary so I'll just leave it as it is and um, not define the border okay Uh, of course, I don't like the way this is standing here. I mean, ideally, I would want it to extend all the way down, you know, all the way to the end of the page, which in some instances could be 680 pixels. So let's just leave it as it is for now. We'll come back into how to configure that. Next thing that I want to do is I want to let's hide this. So I want to configure this nice, you know, group, which could be referred to as group team members. So I am going to get a new group paste it in here first of all I'm going to say that this group has a gap spacing this main group we can't call it task menu anymore so let's just call it group um, parent has a gap space of 20 pixels and uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. let's say that this has a minimum width of zero maximum width of zero and it stretches to the barest end. <laughs> we can give it 20 pixels margin, 20 pixels margin from the right. Let's make this 400 for now so in here this could be our group team members and inside of here we have uh, da, 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 da. 
we have this um, group here. So I'm going to first define all these groups one by one and then have the final group, you know, just slide through everything. So let me just get this text element first of all and draw it here. And I'm going to call this um, new. Fit width to element. You know what? Let's just get a new text and draw it inside of here. New. Maybe this could be 16. And then you have this element called shape. And I can make this um, color into any color I want. But for now, I'm going to use all E's. Make this 100%. Give this a roundness of 20. Make this 25 by 25. And then can just group these two together. Yeah. So this might not work the way I want it to work. So I'm just going to copy paste this and then let's just write a number there let's just call this 12. And then i'm going to make this element so the text itself has its element right so i'm going to make this element 25 and 25 i'm moving 30 by 30. No. Let's center the text. So it's already centered vertically, but now it's centered horizontally. I'm going to give it a background color of all ease and the roundness of 20. So what happens when we have, let's say, 123 tasks it still fit? What about 124 tasks? Yeah, it gets a bit too much. So I mean, ideally, I would want to reduce this to like a 14. <clears throat> Maybe increase this to 35. Lastly, let's make this bold. So group elements in a row, call this group new. Fit with the elements, apply a gap spacing of five pixels. Remove the minimum height. Make sure everything is center aligned vertically. And let's see how this looks. Okay, I think it looks good. It's not as flat as, you know, we have it here, but I think I prefer the way it's looking here too. You know, uh, and then, you know, you can just give it a bit of, Five, 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 all round, just so that it stands out a bit. So you want to do the same thing for this, but then call this in progress. <clears throat> you 
And the last one, of course, is completed. I'm going to call this task info. I'll give it a padding on the left and a padding on the right. Center align um, everything vertically. You can see you have this um, kind of like a search bar kind of thing. So I'm going to add that now. That is an input element with a um, so that's an input element with a you know with a search button by the right, the search icon by the left. So let's just paste this in. This is group search. Make this first search like it. I'm going to replace this element type with an input. Okay, so it's not allowing me to do that. So I need to grab an input element. Paste this in here. I'm going to delete this. Delete this, of course. Um, font type is black. I'm going to increase this to 16. Placeholder is going to be all nines. It's usually this phone and E for C D. Just looking for a very nice but legible gray color. I just go with CBT, CBT, CBT. Okay. So I'm going to independently define this all zeros. Top is none, right is none, zero, bottom is solid, zero. I'll make this two pixels, and then of course I will make this um, a black, and then left is none, zero. Of course, maybe make this like a 50 pixels. I'll remove this minimum width. Make this maximum width 250. <clears throat> okay, that's not working the way I want it to work. Yeah, so I don't think this is as nice as it should be. So I'm changing the colors to this gray. 
this would be such a I'm just going to grab this button, same button, paste here. Bring this down. And, uh, okay. So this will be new task. Now you could always play around how you want this to flow. You know, I always like something like this. You know, but in honor of how the previous one was developed, what would be best would be probably to group this four into a group, a row group, and call that group like a you know group men uh, menu info something like that. And then maybe give them a 20 pixels gap so they are all aligned on the left but then you have new task on the right and maybe you make this bigger and then reduce this from 60 pixels to nothing another thing that i saw there is that we made this background to be flat color of white and i think there was a bit of roundness to it Yeah. Okay. So we could parent thinking of making this an F5, 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 F5. This is obviously going to be white, and then this is going to be gray. So it's coming out, you know, in that beauty that we know it to have. Um, maybe we remove... I think we need to remove this left with right in you know, right with uh, there and then uh, this too has a minimum height of 60 pixels move that So I'm just trying to keep, you know, in line with the design so that it just flows the way it should. You know, I don't like how wide it is. I wish I could break it down to be, you know, to be a bit smaller.
Okay. I think it's definitely getting to where I need it to be. It's possible that we have some margins padding somewhere. There we go. I think that was it. I'm not sure. One more. Let's just check one more time. Okay, let's proceed so we don't spend all our time here. Next, we want to, of course, put these uh, repeating group and want to create like this nice, you know, thing that we have here. So I'm just going to grab a repeating group. Paste that repeating group inside. Remove this, um, remove, let's make this 400 as usual. So it's repeating group tasks. Maybe make this 30 pixels each. Too small. 50 might be the wise place to have it at. So what we have here is a group of tasks and it's do a search for all the tasks, right? Where two things, the project, okay, so we can see that there's an error in our database here. We didn't assign, you know, tasks to a project. So I want you to search for the task where the project is equals to. So how do we get the project now? It's the project that's on the URL. Get data from project, you know, so that's project, project. But that's not all. We also want the project where the assignees is, you know, contains the current user. So we just don't want any task. You just want anybody to be seeing any task. We want them to be seeing a task where, you know, they are, they are basically it contains the current user. It contains them. You no, know, it pertains to them. Now you could always reset this. You could always have a different. Um, for example, I can copy I can copy this expression. I can say here that when this current user's user role, okay, we don't have that. I can just say admin is equals to yes or no. And then by default it will be no. So I can say that when this current user's admin is yes so that's when this user is a an admin i can define the just to show the project 
you know, I can find the conditions for it to just reflect on the project level rather than it reflecting. If you understand what I'm trying to say, rather than it reflecting for both projects and, you know, assigned users. So I'm going to um, copy this again, copy and paste, just take this up a bit and um, <clears throat> this is going to be the task header. I'll delete this button, delete all of this, delete this, and I'm just going to delete everything. Copy this, delete this group, Okay, so what do we have here? First of all, let me remove the fit with the content. So I'm going to change this to black, change this to 12. So first of all, we have a task name. Copy and paste. Then we have status. Now I can make this to be max width of 800. Maybe 80. Yeah. Copy and paste. Due date, same thing applies. Copy and paste. Progress. Progress will remove the max width. The reason why we are removing it for progress is because it seems like bubble sometimes it has that issue. So I'll just copy and paste this. Sign is um, let's leave it as it is. Then we have edit. Which for this, I'll make this 50. Notes. Fifty. Then you have delete. Okay, so I think we're making progress with this wireframe and how everything is to be configured. And I'll see we're almost there with this page. You can feel free to take a break at any time. All right, um, definitely would be taking a break very soon as well. So, Um, 
here we have you know we have the, the the title we have the status we have the due dates we have the progress we have the assignees and then we have the edits we have the notes we have the delete you know functionality you know and what else would we want to have here now we need to basically take from here and add it into this repeating group but first I want this all to be in one group because it's all like scattered across different places now. So I want this to be all group. So the repeating group, everything, I want it to be in one column container. I'm going to call this task overall. And this will be 20 pixels pro each. That's good. And that's all. Make sure that all of this is fine. I think it is. And then let us remove this flat color. So copy this. Into here. And this is going to be, so let's just pass the information. This is not task header again. This is the task, you know, um, child. So this is a task. And data soil is the current sales task. So instead of this being task, then this will be the parent group's tasks name. You can use capitalized words. So that will fit in here. Then for the status, it will be the parent group's task status display. So I can just put something here, maybe like due or new, sorry. And then for the due date, we could call this the parent group's task date, due date formatted as 7011. So that could be 701 2024. Progress, we're going to use a plugin called Progress Bar. If I can find it now. So this is it. And I'm just going to do a bit of configuration here to make it look nicer. Remove this, you know, not this. Let's make this 25. And let's take this here. Coming, I would like to see something because I think I deleted the wrong thing. Previous. Okay. Let's give us ourselves a gap spacing of 10 pixels and do the same thing here. I didn't like how they were touching each other at that point. Okay. Now I would just like to do a bit of styling very quickly, but first of all, let's just say that this is the parent group stacks progress, right? It's going to be measured by hundred. So it's a percentage. And um, we could have the color be this, you know. 
Click that, okay? And then you can also animate the progress. That's fine. For the color of this, I just like to make it the same and make the make this zero so that we don't see it. Border, I remove border so it just looks nice and neat like that. Then you can give this a roundness of five pixels. And that's all that we're doing there. Let's make it center aligned. Okay. So the way we're looking at this now, it, it might be too big. So I just want to reduce it to maybe like a 150 width. 150 width. I think that works very, very fine. So that we have a bit of space for the assignees. Now for the assignees, I'm going to be using a reusable element. So I'll convert this image into a reusable element. And I'll explain what I'm doing now. So let's call this image profile. So a reusable element is an element that can be used multiple times across your app. So instead of you having to design the same thing over and over and over again, you can just do this once as a, re as a reusable element and then from there be able to basically work with that so i'm changing this into a column 200 by 200 pixels is fine and i am getting a group or a text element sorry And I'm going to make this text 24 pixels. Let's just say DA. Make it together. DA. Center. Center vertically. That's good. Make this 50 pixels. Height. Width. Make it 50 pixels as well. make the text element 24 and give it a roundness of 25 or 20. Now we would want to, no, not 20, make it at least 25 or 30. Now I want to give it a border. I'm just going to use my color here and um, so I'm going to say current user's first name truncated to one. Current user's last name truncated to one. So that, what I will do is to just get the first letter and the last letter. Just put the A there again. Okay, so let's center everything. So it's just a very simple thing. This is not going to show. So when current user's profile image is empty, show this text. And then same thing here. When current user's profile image is not empty, show this. So this is shown when it is empty. This is the other one is shown when it's not empty. Just make all of this 50 50.
So we'll go back into the app. I'm not sure if this would work actually. And instead of us having this here, I'm just going to delete that and then I'll paste the reusable element we created. If I can find it now. I'll make this 50-50. Center line, make last, delete. Now, ideally, you know, I would have wanted to paste that here, but um, I'm just seeing it now that that wouldn't work for where what I want to do there. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this small profile and clone from this. So I'm just going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make it tinier. I'm going to make it 20 pixels with 20 pixels height. So this is going to be 20. This will be 20, 20, 12. This is 20 by 20. So that's small profile. Go back to my app. Grab a group. Place the group inside. Move minimum width. Make this 25. Let's make it for you know big as big as it can be for now. 40 pixels. Delete this and uh, yeah, just grab. So when I think about this, you know, it has to be a repeating group. Because if you just have it as a group, you know, it, it won't display the way we want it to display. So let's make it a repeating group. So place the element type, make this a repeating group. Place this repeating group. And then what you want to do is call this a user. So you want to do a search for <clears throat> unknown. You don't want to do a search really, because you just want to get this parent group's tasks assignees. It's not a lot of people. And yes, we would want to define how this rolls. So I want to say that this has columns, 20 pixels, and this just has one row, just one row with many columns, solid, let's make this 22 pixels, so 20, So I would grab this small profile here, grab, drop it inside there, make the element 20 pixels by 20 pixels, grab this, paste it here. And I'm going to make some changes to this small profile so that we can do it properly. 
So the type of content here is a user. And for this, this is going to be small profiles, users, profile image. And here is going to be parent groups, users, first name, and then parent groups, users, last name. Because we're not getting, <clears throat> we're not using the current user, we're using the parent groups user. Same thing for the here, we're using the parent groups user. I don't know why I was not able to get parent groups user here. Yeah, parent groups users profile image. All right, so what that means is that, so how do we know which user? We have to pass that user in to that um, particular cell. So it's gonna be the current cells user. And in here, what I'm trying to do now is I'm just trying to center align it, which is not allowing me to do that. If it's not, that's okay. I'll just reduce everything to 20 pixels. And then center vertically. Okay. So I'm making this 18 pixels so that they kind of cross over each other. Make this none. And So at the right time, it's been nice to see how this basically works. And, uh, and we would walk around that when it's come, when we get to that point. Here, we have 50 pixels each. I think we can still reduce them to 30. If it will allow us, yes, it will. 30 and 30. So I'm going to paste this here, delete all of this, delete this, and delete this. Sorry, it's 25 pixels, 25 pixels. So I did it in situations like this, we just want to give a right margin of five pixels. This would have to still be 50. So in here, what I'm looking for is an edit icon. Once I have that, you know, copy and paste. Here I'm looking for a note or a book. Notepad. Okay, this would work. Here, we're going to give this right of 25 pixels. I think I'll prefer them to have a bit of color instead of them just being bland.
not can remain the way it is. I think we're getting to the point, you know, where we like. I'll just remove borders around here. So of course there's a lot that we need to do to test how this functionality works. Um, we're not yet there you know, in the testing phase of this just been building 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 and um, yeah just making sure that everything looks nice and snug and neat but soon we'll get to the point where we'll be testing you know the functionality of this page I can see this group G we might need to define this border Top left, make it a 20 pixels in a curve. None. Now, as you can see that this, our groups, they have a kind of very nice you know, border by the left, which is about 10 pixels, you know, um, design. So we want to also apply the same thing into this group. Try to click into that repeating group so that you can see it. Yes. So you see there's a width of four pixels and it's this nice color. So let's try and replicate that in here. So first of all, we're gonna make this 50 pixels height, right? And we already have a padding of 10 in the left. So I'm going to remove that padding now. Same thing here, but here I'm gonna make this five width. And then here, I'm going to define each border independently. It's going to be the border style left. It's going to be a solid. It's going to be five. And it's going to be our color. And just so that there's a bit of um, spacing, I'll give the spacing of five from the bottom. I'm not sure if that's enough. Oh, yeah, I think that should be good. Let's make it 20. Let's make this 40. And also, let's make this um, a flat color, white, 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 white. Another thing I like about it is that it has a bit of uh, shadow outset. So it has the 00430. Zero. With 5% zero opacity. So it has a blur radius of four and a spread radius of three. 
So let's see if we can apply that on the shutdown set. So you have zero, zero, four, and a spread radius of three, and the box shadow is zero, 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 zero. And then this is to 10% opacity. Now it's five. One last thing. I don't think that would be the best approach. So let's make this entire group to have 20 pixels add in. Well, this has Yes, I think it's looking brilliant, nice. Really, really bright colors. So we'll take a break from here and in the next section we'll continue. Okay.